For almost two years, the residents who were evacuated from Priory Hall have lived in limbo, in temporary accommodation and burdened with mortgages on properties that are now effectively worthless. For Stephanie's partner, Fia Credaly, the burden proved too much to bear. Add on Fia Credaly. He was absolutely devastated. We had been living there since 2008 and when we were told the severity of the problems, he was just horrified that he had he had allowed us or so he thought, let us stay there under under that roof when it was clearly so unsafe. So he took that, he took that quite badly. He was always somebody who wanted to protect his family and was kind of old fashioned in that sense and that he wanted to provide a safe home for his children and for myself. So he, he, he was he was devastated about it. Mm. And did he share any of that burden with you or did he tend to keep it all to himself? Ne- never really, you know, he was, it was it was more it was more myself. It was I, I would get it quite down about it. Fiercra would just kinda of shoulder shoulder everything and you know, he was he was he he'd always chat about it. It was never anything that he kept inside or that he was he was he didn't think too much about it. He was relieved that we'd been evacuated, you know, so that we could we did have a chance to, to live in a safe home and to make sure that our children weren't in any danger. So for that for in that sense it was a relief for him. Mm. Why do you think he took his own life? We had we have a court case coming up in October, which I know Fierco was um he was very concerned about. It would have been our fifth time as a young family or a young couple with two very young children, our fifth time to have to move. And we were we were pretty certain that that would be the case in October. We had gotten um, numerous letters from KBC um, regarding our um, our moratorium and the interest that was building up on it. And we also the final the final letter that we got on the Thursday or Friday before Fiercre passed away really upset him. Um, I didn't think about it at the time. It was only a time. It was only afterwards when he just didn't have the energy to open it and it upset him that he, he he usually would have dealt with things like this. He'd open the letter and, you know, he'd make the phone calls and just on the Thursday or the Friday when he the Friday when he opened it, he just just seemed so disheartened and kind of he he seemed kind of beaten. Mm. Afterwards you wrote a public letter to the Taoiseach and last week he responded to it publicly uh, saying that he needed more time to uh, consider Priory Hall. What's your reaction? I'm absolutely horrified to be honest for um, for a number of things. Um, Like Phil Hogan, we've asked for two years for a meeting with both the Minister for the Environment and with Mr Kenny and they've refused on all occasions hiding behind the fact that it's going through the court but yet they've used a very public platform to 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 make suggestions about what might happen to Priory Hall rather than come and meet us on a one-to-one basis you know or, or meet a representative of the people of Priory Hall and um, it seems that it has taken the death of Fiercra that has um, that has made them back them into a corner you know it's to me it's too little too late and he's had two years to consider all options you know it's not as if this is a new case and it's only just come out in the open it's two years down the road I think he's had enough time you know and it, there's been enough taxpayers money spent on it and also we've lost a life here because of Priory Hall. Priory Hall was the root of Fiercra's death.